Uh, okay, I'm working in Stockholm for the city of Stockholm and uh, I have the responsibility for the trees in the hard surfaces on squares and along the streets. And it's around 30 to 40,000 trees, we really don't know how many it is, but it's a quite a lot of trees. And we had a budget uh, of around 3 million pounds every year to invest for trees and uh, we put the most of the money to re uh, make the uh, planting bed for the trees in the city. So, as Anne already told you about, uh, there are uh, some difficult for trees to grow in the, the urban environment and especially in this kind of hard surface that, I, that my trees are living in. And uh, at 2001 when I started to work at the traffic department, uh, I already had noticed uh, that there were a big uh, problems for the trees in Stockholm and we made a, uh, a small investigation, uh, investigation about the trees that uh, were living in this absolute center of Stockholm. We have about 12,000 street trees in the center of Stockholm and uh, up to one third of them were dying. So we realized quite fast that we have really to do something extra for saving these, those trees and the other trees that were, we were thinking were going to die if we didn't make any uh, uh, solution for them. So, and it's, uh, when you see a picture like this, it's really easy to understand what the problem is. And Anne already spoke a lot about it. And uh, of course, one of the main thing is that you can't get water down to these uh, materials. I mean, in the early 1900s, it was no problem because you have this open uh, materials on the ground, you have big stones uh, instead of uh, uh, concrete slabs and uh, it was much easier for the water to go down to these uh, natural, natural materials that they were using, they were using uh, gravels and sands and other things. Uh, but what's also happening here is that when you take away all the water from the and put it in the, down in the sewer system, uh, the groundwater level is sinking in Stockholm and it's also affecting the, uh, the houses and buildings in Stockholm so they start to topple over and they have to make new construction to keep them in place. So uh, it's, it's not the, just a problem for the trees that you don't get the water down in the ground. Uh, yeah, this is an example. It was the first tree I took care of when I started to work at the traffic department. It was just 50 meters from the entrance from the traffic department. I asked for an extra 30,000 pounds to rescue that tree. And uh, uh, it, uh, in the ordinary, uh, what we would do with a tree that, that looks like this before was just to cut it down and plant new trees, of course. It's almost dead. It looks dead. This is in August. And you can see the leaves are just small, small, <coughs> extremely small and yellow and just looks extremely sick. And of course you don't get any environmental benefits from a tree that looks like this. And, and if you think about that one third of the trees were looking like this in Stockholm, you realize the problem. So this is what it looks when you uh, open up a sidewalk in Stockholm. You have these concrete slabs on top and then you have a layer of five centimeters of sand and one layer of asphalt and the, the roadbed is uh, uh, made out of crushed granite fraction and it's extremely hard compacted and we have this uh, instruction for building in Stockholm that's really tough for the contractors they really have to follow it and it's controlled uh, <coughs> extremely well but that's all that also gives uh, a construction that uh, it's not so good for the trees to find a, uh, a way for the roads out uh, and to support the tree. So this is what could look uh, uh, like after 40 years, a tree that was planted 40 years ago and the root system I uh, can't hardly get away from the small pit that they got from the beginning because of this heavily compacted material. And this is the material that's used all the time in, in Stockholm when we uh, make these roads and uh, construction, the sidewalk construction, is this crushed granite stone with fraction from zero to up to 63 millimeters. And when you compact that, no roots can go through that uh, mixture. It's impossible for roots. Uh, 
uh, to penetrate that. So that's one of the biggest problems from the trees in Stockholm. Uh, but it's easy to get inspired fr from different places out in nature or in constructed places like in uh, this railway uh, construction uh, that you can see all over the world and it's made in the same way, it's uh, quite big uh, pieces of, of uh, crushed granite uh, with no fine material in it and uh, as soon as the railway department stops to use herbicides it happens something and that is that the trees are start to growing extremely well in this uh, uh, mm, uh, granite uh, fractions. So that's things that inspire me. And uh, of course when we uh, try to find a material to uh, build something uh, um, to get uh, the trees to develop their root systems uh, uh, in the st streets and the sidewalks. We tr want to find a material that we can find locally, of course, and uh, uh, if we can f uh, find a material that's uh, from recycling, it's even better. So we use granite in the first, uh, for f uh, mostly, but uh, when we can get hold of uh, uh, recycled concrete, for instance, we use that. And uh, uh, the hardest thing to find is something uh, to uh, use instead of uh, industrial made soil. That's the, whole, uh, the hardest thing to, uh, to find. Uh, but because we can't get any natural soils in Stockholm, it's always uh, manufactured soils uh, that we get. But of course, yeah. So the solution that we have been using now for 12 years in Stockholm is uh, this kind of structured soils and it's um, mainly based on that we use uh, granite that we have a lot of in Stockholm. We always get a lot of granite leftovers from the uh, new development sites and uh, we use uh, this kind of uh, uh, fraction that's 100 to 150 millimeters. It's the size of a handball. Uh, that we put out in layers of uh, 30 centimeters, each layer is 30 centimeters uh, and uh, the most common uh, depth we have is 60 centimeters so that is two layers of that kind of stone. So we put a layer of 30 centimeters and uh, we compact it heavily uh, and after that we flush down the soil between the stones. So we we have a st uh, uh, this strong construction that it can take extremely good uh, heavy loads and then we flash down the soil in the voids between the stones so we don't get the compacted soil so it's open for the root system to penetrate between the stones into the soil and then uh, when we have filled the, uh, the voids between the stones of the first layer we put the next layer of stones new 30 centimeters of stones on top of that and compact it. So you get extremely strong construction that you can uh, go by with cars or any uh, machines and, and you don't destroy the uh, voids between the stones because they're uh, completely uh, stable construction in this way. And uh, so when the next uh, layer is uh, compacted, uh, flush down now, uh, the next uh, uh, soil between the, uh, the stones. And when they're filled, uh, usually we can get uh, about 20 to 25 percent of the vo volume we can uh, get soil in between the stones. And when that is done, uh, we put a layer of uh, just clean stones, crushed rock, 32 to 63 millimeters, size like this, on top of it. Uh, put, uh, and that layer is 20 centimeters and it's an uh, infiltration layer and uh, kind of a lung for the whole uh, uh, planting bed for the trees. Uh, as Anne told you before, it's one of the most important things is to get the carbon dioxide out from the ground. And with this kind of sealed surfaces that we have in the cities now, the, the carbon dioxide is captured below ground and carbon dioxide kills roots. That's important to understand. 
you have to get the carbon dioxide out of the ground. And uh, in Stockholm we have uh, so little water, so we have to get a lot of water down to these trees too. And we use these uh, kind of wells to uh, get the water down to the, uh, this infiltration layer. And then it travels on top of the structure of soil and infiltrate to the soil. This was a demand from the road engi engineers, civil engineers in the traffic department uh, because they didn't want to have soil in the ground. But when I presented this solution with the rocks on rocks and rocks leaning on rocks and not on soil, the soil is between the stones and don't affect the construction with the stones. And then they accepted this construction that I could use it. And uh, if they just could do what they wanted on, on the surface and use their uh, 0 to 63 millimeters compacted material up here, then I can do uh, this uh, solution below. So we separate their uh, area, a space from my space for the trees, with a geotextile that follows the construction. So the fine material won't fall down in this aeration layer an infiltration layer and so this is a construction we have been using for 12 years now and it's working extremely well for 12 years and we don't have any more problems with the road system trying to find a way out to get oxygen and water up here so we don't destroy any uh, pavement anymore in the uh, sidewalks and uh, the trees are growing extremely well. I'm always, every time I get out in the city to look at the trees that we were planting 12 years ago, 10 years ago, 5 years ago, I get surprised. Because the development of the trees is something that we have never seen before. And even people from nurseries that come to visit us are surprised of the growth rate of the trees. It's extremely impressive. And uh, the thing that's important with trees in cities of course that they have leaves and not looks like the trees I showed you in the beginning and the 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 crowns of the trees are extremely dense in when we use this solution for the trees okay so this is what it looks like when the contractor gets the drawing to build after it's the same thing that I showed before it's just more detailed information so you really can build for it uh, what we always do with the trees in Stockholm, we, we place them, uh, uh, the root ball, directly on the stone. So it's a stable thing. You put it on the, uh, uh, I mean, the trees we are using in Stockholm weight about 350 kilos at least. So if you have a clay soil and put a, a tree that weighs 350 kilos, you get compaction below it. But if you have it in this way, you always have open voids and it's easy for the root system to develop and uh, yeah it's a really stable construction for the trees to, to start growing. This is what it looks like. It looks exactly the same as before. You have these uh, concrete slabs up here and you have the sand and the asphalt layer of five centimeters and this crushed uh, 0 to 63 millimeters uh, extremely hard compacted material and then we have the, our geotextile that separate the two uh, different uh, layers. And we have the aeration layer, infiltration layer, that we uh, get the water in and the uh, carbon dioxide out of the ground. And then it's down here we have the structured soil. And uh, we always try to uh, connect as many as possible uh, planting beds to get the uh, biggest uh, uh, volume of uh, structural soils. The more you can connect them, the better the tree will grow. And we try to collect all the small pipes and cables and things close to a house. So we uh, yeah, save one or one and a half meter uh, close to the uh, building and put the, all the cables uh, to that side. The bigger water pipes and gas pipes are out in the streets on the other side. And this is the most common way we are building uh, for trees in when we use structured soil now. Um, this is how it looks from uh, above. 
uh, we have these concave uh, concrete slabs that collect the waters um, from the downpipes, from the roofs. So when you look at the profile of a street, we almost take half of the surface water that we can take from that spot and collect it and give it uh, down to the trees. And um, yeah, it works quite well. So I want to show you how it looks like in the reality so you really can understand the, the way what's happening. I mean, granite is what we have in, in Stockholm. I think you perhaps have other materials you can use here in uh, uh, different places in, in England or Scotland or wherever you are. You're going to find some material that's uh, recycled material or some material that you have a lot of and it's uh, easy and cheap to use. The important thing is that you get a strong construction with a lot of voids between the stones. And the important thing is when you chose the, the size of this, the stones is that the, the, the size should be as even as possible because then you get the bigger voids between. It's not a big difference the size of stones to the same size of stone and you get the most void between them. So this is the first laid in place. Heavily compacted and you can drive a truck or anything on this one. It won't settle anymore when you have compacted it. And this is uh, on the right side there. You have the recycled concrete the first time we used it. And we were, of course, afraid of the, that when we started to compact the recycled uh, concrete that it was falling apart. But when they have selected the, the size we wanted, they, of course, already the, the concrete that was uh, low and not so strong had fallen off. So we also got the most strongest pieces. So it didn't happen anything. It, uh, it worked exactly the same as when we used the granite. And of course, if you can use recycled concrete in a development area where you tear down old buildings, old industries or something and, and use the material in place and you don't have to move, move the and or get material from other places. Uh, it's a, a fantastic way of uh, using recycling materials. Okay, so uh, the stones out, compacted and we use this kind of concrete boxes just to keep the pavement in place around the trees so we can uh, change the trees if we want or, and it won't fall, the pavement won't uh, be destroyed around the tree. And it's uh, this piece, uh, this part of the concrete box is closed because this is the part where the, the, the pavement is staying and the uh, load bearing layer is staying and the asphalt and everything. So we don't want any openings there for the root system to uh, get out. Uh, but down here, 30 centimeters below, then we have the openings where the root system uh, can get access to the uh, aeration layer and the structural soil. And of course, when you level this kind of boxes, you use uh, an open material uh, to level it and don't start to use uh, material with zero fraction in it. And also important, if you use thing, uh, a concrete box like this with openings, it's important that the stones will fall in. So you have this uh, construction that stabi is stable and uh, don't fall in afterwards. You have to compact it and let the stones fall in. And you want to have the stones here so you can put the trees on top of the stones. So uh, then the next uh, thing you have to do is to flush down the soil. And you have this hose with a strong ray of uh, water, not so much water, but a strong ray. And you flush the uh, soil down between the stones and uh, it's important that the contractors really understand that you can't put a thick <coughs> layer of soil, it's just uh, two to three centimeters of soil in each layer when you flush the soil down between the stones. That's extremely important because oh, they're always in a hurry and want to think, uh, make <laughs> things faster and earn more money. So that's one of the uh, first things you have to really convince them about. It's 
uh, thin layers of soil, otherwise it's not going to work. And then they get frustrated if you do, and they try to mix it afterwards, or they mix it on the ground, they put it down and compact it with soil and stones together, and then it's, everything is destroyed. Uh, it's so important that you, the stone is compacted uh, uh, for themselves, and then you put the, the soil down in the between the stones. But after a while, when they have done this, uh, they're, they're getting, uh, they've been uh, becoming experts of it, and it's not a problem when they have made it some uh, times. So, flushing down the soil, and uh, we have been a bit worried about the nutrients in the ground, so we put this uh, long, uh, slow time fertilizer on top of that. Uh, uh, yeah. And then you here you can see the well. Uh, this is the structural soil, and the opening in the, of, in the well is uh, situated above the structural soil. So it, the water comes up in the infiltration layer, and, so, and the oxygen, oh, and the carbon dioxide can go out that way. And this uh, uh, geotextile you, can, you see here is yes. When you have streets that goes like this, and you have these connected uh, planting beds with this aeration layer on top, and you have wells every 10 meter, you take in water here and there and there, and in the end of the street you can have a nice fountain uh, <laughs> <laughs> if you got a lot of water. <laughs> so, uh, if we have a situation like that, we take the geotextile and go put it uh, uh, like this in a in the layer of the infiltration, just to uh, get the water to uh, uh, calm down a bit, uh, run more slowly. So, uh, so close up for uh, on the aeration layer. Uh, this part is where the aeration layer comes, and uh, that is uh, the construction for the uh, uh, for the trees. And uh, uh, on top of that, you can make any construction. You can uh, make concrete. You can uh, put the curb stones on this construction because it won't uh, get destroyed, and it's a good support for any installation you want to do. And in this picture, you also can see when we take. Uh, sometimes we think we got too little amount of water for the trees, and then we uh, put this side. Uh, I don't know what you call them in England. Inlet. Uh, side inlets, and we take all the water we can take from the streets in the same time. And you know, we are living in Stockholm, so we use a lot of salts uh, uh, on the streets and the sidewalks, and it don't affect trees at all when you have this open solution in the ground. Uh, trees are extremely well adapted to search for, for and uh, use their root system to find what they want. So. If it's just have this o kind of open material, the salt uh, that we are using are not affected trees at all. So, the important thing, the geotextile on top of our construction uh, and our solution for the trees are sealed with this uh, geotextile, so it's extremely important that the ge geotextile is uh, well uh, uh, in contact with all the construction, so you don't get any leakage of the smaller fraction from above. And this is what it looks like when the, the pavement is on top of everything, and the only thing you can really see that uh, tells you that some is something different here is that we have these concrete slabs that's collecting the water and give it uh, to the trees, and we use different solution. Uh, depending on where we are. And uh, we are using more and more uh, water from the roads because we think it's, it's such a good solution to take care of the uh, rainwater and to uh, uh, take away the pressure from the uh, sewer system and uh, in, in the end take away the uh, uh, yeah the pollution from the coming to the Baltic Sea in the end, that's what's happening. Uh, so I think it's 
when you th see this way of handling the rainwater and give it back to the trees, give it back to the groundwater, so you can the houses can be stabilized because the water, the groundwater is not sinking anymore, and the trees are start growing, and you get so many benefits of using a system like that. And the uh, the system is also uh, so easy to use in an old city. I mean, it's it's you can use it anywhere and and if you have old trees it's just to take away the old material and uh, and rebuild it with this uh, kind of solution that I have shown you and uh, uh, you have to be aware that uh, and you must check that the trees really have a uh, root system left because <laughs> when the the last hundred years there have been a lot of cables and line uh, pipes and things uh, 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 placed near the trees and there's been uh, excavation. I should say every tenth year uh, during the last hundred years someone have been uh, near the trees to have made some sort of excavation. And you can see it just uh, by the cables uh, that you can see here. Uh, it's we just put them back in the, this construction. It's no problem to have the these cables and uh, electrical things in the structured soil. Uh, so, and w what's happened last year was that the uh, Swedish National Road and Transport Research Institute uh, uh, approved the, uh, for us to use this and said it was okay as a road construction. And this is a really a milestone for this uh, way of building in the urban areas, if we can use this kind of system in the road uh, construction, uh, then it opens up a whole new world for uh, handling uh, rainwater in the cities and uh, take care of it locally. You can understand uh, this is really important for uh, the future for the structured soil uh, in Sweden. And I think around the world too, that it's proved that it's, uh, it's, a good, it's a good way of construct roads. They made it in the laboratories <laughs> and they made it out in the real uh, to check uh, how it worked. And you can find it in this, uh, on this address if you were interested in this report about this testing. Uh, and this is what's happened, uh, what uh, really encourages us. When we do the uh, excavation, sometimes we, sometimes we have to do excavation because in this case we have the tram that was uh, coming this way and we have to push the trees 60 centimeters away from the curbstone. And uh, so the trees have been standing here for two years. And I mean, it, I couldn't count how many roots there are coming out there. This is in the aeration layer where the roots, uh, the fine root system just explode. I mean, this is thousands of roots. If you count the roots around this concrete box that, uh, box that comes out, it's extremely, I have never seen anything like it before, uh, 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 the root system develop in this way. Of course, these are cut now when we move the box, but uh, you couldn't <coughs> notice any difference on the tree canopy the year after. It looks exactly as I said, uh, standing there for 10 years. It was, you couldn't tell the difference. And we mowed it in the middle of the winter. Uh, and this is uh, four years after planting. It's an uh, Aeschylus uh, tree. Uh, and it's three and a half meter from the stem. And we have the aeration layer here. And we have the, uh, the structural story beginning here. And in the aeration layer, you hold, have this extremely fine root system going up from the thicker roots that are in the surface of the structural soil. Oops. And uh, when you find mycorrhizae, uh, uh, when we do our uh, excavation and uh, when we check out how the uh, root system are developing, it feels like we're on the right path. Uh, if you get mycorrhizae uh, growing like this, yeah. It fits good. And we use this uh, solution in, in uh, gravel surface too. And the same thing, uh, I mean, if you just have gravel surface with fractions of zero up to eight or something like that, it, they get extremely uh, compacted. But so we build the, the same, in the same way, structured soil, aeration layer, but then we use uh, 
a smaller and smaller fraction of crushed stone, but just on top we use this uh, material pumice stones mixed with crushed stone, 50-50, and then we get this infiltration capacity of, of at least 50 millimeters an hour uh, on rain. And of course the carbon dioxide can easily get out of the, in this kind of solution. And it's just to look. When we do excavation and we find root system like this, you can't ask for more. It's, it's optimal. And uh, so far we had made 2,000 planting beds for trees inside Stockholm. And uh, one of the latest, uh, latest biggest projects is uh, down here. It's almost three kilometers with 300 ginkgo biloba. And uh, we collect water from the roofs and the sidewalks all along that street. And this is what it looks like after eight years. The Aeschylus. And uh, I mean, eight years. It's extremely good uh, uh, development of trees. And they, I mean, if you don't talk about London plains, I mean, if you want a selection of species and not just plains, then you have to do something. And uh, uh, this, uh, we have tried perhaps 50 to 100 different species, and every species absolutely love this construction. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, that we are using. And when you see pictures like this, and you see these uh, linden trees, lime trees growing the first season, and you have these almost oversized leaves uh, and the shots of 50 at least 50 centimeters in the first season, and this dense foliage in the crown, you understand that you, have, you are on the right path. You have found something that's going to give the urban trees a future. And this is also a tree we planted at 2,000 trees and after 10 years at the location. This is a small crown, Aeschylus, the Pyramidalis, Aeschylus Pyramidalis. And uh, compared to the trees that were planted 80 years ago on the other side, uh, what they look like. I mean, come to Stockholm in August, I show you everything. Uh, it's hard to understand the, the, qu the quality we get when we use this kind of uh, uh, solution. 60 centimeters is just construction below uh, the trees here and uh, we made just a, a, a small uh, 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 structured soil with 10 centimeters aeration layer and wells uh, and it worked extremely well. Yeah, Quercus palustris, uh, Rubinia pseudo acacia. It's just a totally different if you give them what they want to trees. And uh, even if you don't plant trees of the one season, this is what's <laughs> happened. I mean, it's like having the doors open to a luxury hotel of some kind and no one is going to uh, stop you. I, he is almost two meter long, Klaus, who's standing here. And you see, I mean, after five years you should have a tree that's ten meters high or something like that. Huh? I want to try this just to leave one <laughs> space open to see what's happened. Uh, so this is what happened with the first tree that I asked extra money for. So I was lucky that it was a success. <laughs> I mean, it was just outside the traffic department. And of course, when you can uh, show and give pictures like this to the the uh, bosses in the traffic department, so they can travel around Europe to show, oh, look at what we've done. Then it's easy to get the extra money after. <laughs> promise you. So of course, if we give this. Uh, all these benefits from uh, getting trees to grow and we can handle the storm water. This is the first time we used biochar or charcoal in this case. We were looking for a, uh, a solution to build this extremely thin layer of soil that we could plant uh, grass on. Because we wanted to test, uh, after we have seen that the, the development of the root system was so good in, in this aeration layer, we, we just wanted to plant trees in, in clean stones. No soil at all, just clean stones, because we thought it could be something about it. And this is uh, just outside uh, the center of Stockholm, and we had a clay in the ground, so we had a lot of, it was water there, and we had nutrients in the clay below this uh, uh, 
uh, excavation. So we excavated it to one meter deep and put just uh, this uh, gravel uh, uh, size 32 to 63 millimeters and planted the trees in the stones. And on top of that we put this mixture of 50% of charcoal and uh, the uh, common soil that we use. And when I came back from holiday, we, yeah, you see for yourself, the tree was, uh, the grass was growing extremely well, so I <laughs> think we have hit something here uh, that we can use in the future. And the, the tree, well, you couldn't complain about it after the first season. It was 30 centimeters, it looks quite healthy. And not so dense in the crown, but still it's acceptable in a solution like this. But on the other side, we planted the trees in, in soil and, and a half of uh, charcoal inspired by the grass and then we got this effect and we hadn't seen anything like it before. Uh, it was shot more than 50 centimeters, it's uh, prunus uh, uh, and uh, the leaves was from the tip of the shots uh, down into the stem. It was completely filled with leaves all the way and it was really big sized leaves and you couldn't see through the crown at all. And it was just, it, this is the first growing season that you get these results. And uh, that of course uh, encouraged us to uh, use more and more charcoal. Uh, and uh, just a couple of months uh, that we had these results, the first articles about Terra Preta came in the papers and you could hear about it in television and TV. And uh, then we understand what, why uh, we had, had these good results. Uh, and. Uh, we, when we had a name on it, we also could search for people that had been working for it. And we got in contact with uh, researchers at the U Uppsala University who helped us to and explain why it worked so extremely well for the trees. And uh, so now uh, we're trying to get hold as, of as much uh, biochar as uh, we can because we are trying to replace the common soil, industrial-made soil. Uh, with this biochar uh, uh, filled with some sort of nutrients uh, mixed with crushed uh, stones, uh, granites in different fractions. You can read this later because I don't have the time. We have tried to use this biochar without nutrients as a filter when we take down the storm water or rainwater from the surface as a, just a filter to catch the nutrients that comes with the water and some pollution that comes with the water. And uh, just a couple of months later, after we have done that, this report came out, so <laughs> we, we understood that we are on the right path because the biochar could uh, be used as activated carbon uh, as a filter. <laughs> this is just a crushed, <laughs> crushed stone with biochar with nutrients, and it's just 10% of biochar with nutrients. So it just gives us a cover to the, the granite, and uh, this is. Uh, uh, if, we can, if, th if this proves to work, it's an extremely uh, easy system because you can pre-made uh, pre this uh, mixture before and tip it down the ground. You don't get any compacted soil between, but you still have this extremely good uh, mm, qualities in the uh, biochar that you can store nutrients, water, and uh, they have a, a lot of uh, air in them. And yeah, and we try it on extremely uh, uh, in different location. We use it in parks, and uh, because you never know what you have in the parks. And, the, and when they do parks nowadays, they use these big construction machines traveling around and compacting the soil all the time. So you really have big problems anyway in Stockholm to get trees to uh, grow in parks too. So we use it. In, um, uh, you know him? <laughs> I think his name is Keith. <laughs> He's working in a nursery in England. Yeah, but yeah, he took a sample with him uh, back to England bec because he didn't really believe it. This is uh, the, uh, the crushed granite and the, the biochar below and then we put just a thin layer of ordinary soil on top of it and put uh, saw grass on it. And this is what uh, the magnolias looks like the first spring after they have been living in this place for one year. And it's quite satisfying for us to see that they look quite happy after a year in Stockholm. 
So we, uh, we, have a d we try a lot of mixes to find the, the best way of mix uh, biochar and uh, crushed stone. So it's just crushed stone and biochar, no soil at all. And it's hard for us who have worked with soil all, the, all our lives. And yeah, we make different solutions. This is just biochar and crushed stone, 600 meters. And we put 60 mollus, uh, flowering mollus, and spiria vetulifolia. Uh, on the ground and in this, in this crush down and biochar. And this is uh, uh, this year we are planting a lot of perennials to see what the effect is on perennial borders and things like that. Uh, and they, we started last year with this Bergenia plantation and uh, this spring it looks like this and yeah we're looking forward to see what's happening in the, in the, the years to come. And uh, we have a lot of dogs running. <laughs> so, ah, 20,000 cherries planted in the ditches. This is what I found out. I mean, French drain. That is what we're doing all the time when we plant trees. This is 20,000 cherries we planted last year in this uh, with uh, uh, pie chart. <laughs>